Please applaud. Hello there, everyone, and let me know if you can hear me and see the slide. It's Melissa Armo. How's everyone doing today? Wonderful. First day of November. Really hard to believe. Uh, this year is flying by. What can I say? <laughs> Christmas is less than two months away, and here we are. So let's get started. If you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Kathy can put my information in the room. If you would like a trial to the live training room, you can email me for the rest of the week. I was off for a couple of days. I'm back today. Uh, no rush for the weary. Uh, was back right on TV as soon as I got back, and now I'm doing the webinar. <laughs> so I'm a busy gal, but tomorrow morning I will be up bright and early, and we'll see what we get this week. It is earning season. What does that mean? It means that there's a lot of opportunities to day trade, to do fast day trades, and also to do options trades. So we're going to talk about really how you can earn a living trading, and I'm it's going to focus on what I do. For those of you that have never heard what I do before, I focus on a strategy that is based on stocks that are gapping, okay? And that means I'm looking for the fast move, in, out, quick, quick, quick. We trade between 9.30 and 10 a.m. in the morning. And again, if you'd like a trial for this week, email me. I will be happy to send it to you. You can very easily earn $250,000 a year trading momentum stocks. Why? Because they have large moves. And so this is not long-term swing trading, okay? This is not buy, hold for months and months and months. While you can train that way, you certainly, certainly can, every single thing that I'm doing, I'm looking for the quick move. Even when I'm doing an option, I'm doing the weeklies. So that, that to me is fast as far as options goes. It's not like I'm doing an option that's out for like three months or something, okay? Again, you can, you can do that, but I'm looking for the momentum to come in quickly. And again, the momentum could be to the upside or the momentum could be to the downside. We're going to focus on shorts today because I do like to focus on shorts. And that may sound crazy considering how bullish the market is. Again, market's at the highs again today. But the fact is I short all the time, all the time in a bullish market, okay? So my strategy is something that you can use in a bullish market or a bearish market either way. Uh, and we don't know how long this move up is gonna last, okay? I just talked about that on Chatter right now. The, it could last all the rest of this year. It could last well into the summer of 2022 until we have a sell-off. We don't know. People are expecting a correction, but don't expect it necessarily. I do almost a different stock every single day. I never uh, preempt it, I should say, okay? Here's my information. If you have questions, you can call me. 929-3200 GAP. You can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. Again, I'm on every channel pretty much. Um, I never know when I'm on until they call me, but I always try to tweet uh, my TV hits or where to watch me as well. Uh, and today, like I said, I was on Cheddar. I was on Fox News a couple weeks ago with Neil. He just had COVID. He got over it, luckily. So we're in this time where, you know, I just talked about this on Cheddar. What if, what could crash the market? Well, we could have another shutdown. I know no one likes to hear that, but I say 50, 50, that could happen. Or what else? Terrible unemployment numbers. All these mandates going on right now. We have a big number out this Friday. That, all of that, okay, creates volatility, which is actually good if you want to be an active trader. So I consider myself an active trader. Uh, someone that's looking to get in, get out. I call it chunking it out. You're going into the market to pull out $500 or $1,000 or $300, whatever. It depends how much you're risking. I usually say one to one. So if you're looking to risk 500, you should be looking to make 500. If you're looking to risk 300, you're looking to make 300. I say one to one on average. While you could make more than that in some of the trades, I think one to one is a good solid goal, a good solid average. And that goes for anything, whether it's an options trade or whether it's a day trade, okay? So why are you here? Some of you I recognize, some of you I've seen before. Some of you um, have been following me for a while. Some of you I know are trading and you're losing money. And I guess the question is, why are you trading a strategy if you're losing? It's very difficult for people I know to change what they're doing. Change is hard for people, I know it is. But if you're losing money, you cannot continue to trade the same strategy. 
You know, you have to find something new, find something that works. Maybe you're here because you're not making enough money. You need something, a strategy that again has big moves. Or maybe you've never traded before and you're here and you don't know where to start. Or maybe you have a strategy but it's just not consistent. And again, the nice thing about what I do is, cons is, is consistent. We find gaps most days. Some days I may not find anything, but most days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there is at least one play, and I try to focus on one play a day. Some days I do more than one play, but really one is all you need, quite frankly. And again, the consistency comes from following the same system, boom, 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 okay? And I'm very black and white about it. I think traders want to get sucked into all these things, the next Reddit stock, or this thing, or that thing, or whatever, or Bitcoin, or people get sucked up into these fantasy worlds. While it sounds great that you could make all this money in one stock and like GME or whatever, it usually doesn't happen like that. And it rarely happens to that a, a lot of people. It could happen to a few people that happen to get lucky. They're in a stock before it makes a big move up or down. That is not the majority of the people. And that is not how you should look at trading. Anyways, that is more of a gambling mentality. What I do is consistent. I just apply the same method every single solitary day. And my method is based on gas, which we're gonna talk about. And one of the things that you have to have to be successful is a strategy. Again, just taking ideas, watching television, or going into these Reddit chat rooms is really not using any strategy whatsoever at all. So I have a strategy that I apply and use to make my daily picks. And I also have a way to enter and exit the trade. And then on top of that, good money management. And that may sound like a simplistic thing to focus on, but it is important. It is important when you trade. Your risk should be the similar or close to similar to every single trade that you take. You can't risk $500 in one trade and $2,500 in another trade because what if the one that you risk, the 500 works, and you make 200%, you make $1,000, and the one that you risk 2,500 loses, you'll still be upside down with a 200% gain, you see? So you have to have very, very similar, or close to similar, it's not an exact science, risk in each uh, st each trade that you take. And again, this is for the same for options or day trades, okay? Now let's talk a little bit of here about what I do. So uh, my strategy is based on gaps. So what is a gap? What is a gap? Well, look at this here. This is a chart of Zillow. This was back, had earnings, gapped in October. So what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. So the stock closed here, gapped down. Closed up here at four o'clock. Market always closes at four o'clock. And then the next day at 9.30 a.m., it opened down here. So it closed here and it opened down here, okay? So it closed at one price, whatever this was, 95 and change, and open at a different price, which was what? Like around 86 and change. This drop fell, we shorted it. This is a gap. A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Stocks can gap down, stocks can also gap up. What's a gap up? Let's go over here. This is back on the 12th. Stock closed here at four o'clock, same time the market closes, boom. Open here at 9.30 the next morning, rally. So again, this is a gap up because it closed at one price and opened at a higher price. Here it closed at one price and opened at a lower price. Okay, so there are gap ups, there are gap downs. This is the one that we did, we shorted it, it worked. Down here's the volume, you can see, boom. Again, when I'm trading, I'm looking for momentum. Got the drop, boom, we shorted it. Now for those of you that don't know what a short is, a short is when you're betting that something's gonna go down, that's really what you're doing. You, while you can go long stocks, if you buy a stock at $5 and it rallies to $6, what do you make a buck? So if you have 5,000 shares times a dollar, what would you make? $5,000. But you could do the same thing to the downside. You could do the same thing for a short. You can short a stock at $6 and take 5,000 shares. And if it drops to $5, you can make a dollar or $5,000 to the downside. Again, you're betting that the stock will drop and fall, which is what it did here. and it had a nice move and it had good momentum. Anyways, what do you need to be successful and earn this kind of money? You need a strategy and you need a way to make the picks. So this is the meat and potatoes are really what I teach in my class. I teach a 26 point rating system. Each day I get up and I go through the checklist and that's how I come up with Zillow, IBM, anything that I trade, I rate the gap. I rate it on the daily chart. This is what I teach in my class. It is a 16 hour class. And it's the whole method of what I do. That is how I fine tune it 
to make the decision that I want to do this particular stock, whatever it happens to be, again, Zillow, for example. And then I also rate it using the 26 point system to determine how good it is. So per my system, it does not have to have a perfect score of 26. It has to have 20 or more. 20 is the cutoff. 20 is still a lot of things. Now, if it rates 22 or 23 or 24, the higher the rating, the better the quality gap. So training is about odds. It's about high odds. Nothing is 100%. That's why I choose a risk. I don't risk my whole account in every day or when I trade because I say, well, there's a possibility this trade may not work. So when you're trading, you have to make choices, again, this is part of trading, that say, wait a minute, I want to do this and risk my money, that's something that has high odds of working. Again, I was kind of mentioning the Reddit stocks earlier. Those stocks, to play those stocks or take trades in those rooms do not have high odds, they have low odds. Similar to gambling, gambling is low odds. You do not have a high odds chance of going to the casino tonight and making XYZ amount of money. You understand? You want to risk your money in trades that have high odds. It's an odds uh, uh, methodology. And that's why I developed the rating system. And 26 things may seem like a lot, but it's really not. Because when you learn it, it takes you five, maybe 10 minutes to go through one gap. And I can do it very quickly. I choose not to. I like to take my time in the morning but the reality is the more detailed you can be, the higher the chance you're gonna have at winning, okay? Which is obviously what we wanna do. So that's part of it. And I have a method and structure to enter and exit the picks. We're gonna go over some trades here that we did. Again, I look at the daily chart, but I also take my trades on the one minute chart. The one minute chart moves fast. We're talking today about making money in 30 minutes, Sometimes I'm in and out of a trade in five minutes, in 10 minutes, in 15 minutes. That's fast because I'm trading it on the one minute chart. And as I said earlier, also you need good money management and you need goals. So if your goal is to make, say, $5,000 a week, really your goal is to make on average $1,000 a day. Again, this is an average. So that's how you break it down and you work backwards from there and i think that really helps people sometimes the idea of making you know two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year for people is just completely overwhelming because they've never made any money trading at all and they just can't fathom how they could ever do this for a living or do it full time or make this kind of money or whatever break it down again i i use the terminology chunking it out it will help you get your head around these numbers once you break it down. It's funny because I live in Manhattan and I was talking to a friend the other day, I've been looking for apartments and we were just talking about things and like she almost fell off her chair about the rent for one of these apartments I was talking to her about that I was going to look at. People that do not live in New York City have no comprehension, can't even fathom what it costs to live here. If you live here, you understand it. It's not a big deal. It is what it is. You live here. But people that do not live in New York, it's like these are these numbers just blow them away. Like they can't like this it makes no sense to them. It's like on a different planet. OK, so if you're someone that's been losing this idea of making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, which is not a million dollars, it's not even a half a million dollars. And again, it breaks down to $1,000 a day. It's like, to so some people, they can't even fathom it because, because they've been losing for years, okay? So if you understand that your head has, it has issues, you know, mentally about wrapping your head around some of these numbers, pick a number that's a goal per day or per week that you can wrap your head around. And then you can increase it. Because sometimes it's just about the confidence. You lack confidence that you can do it. And you've got to gain the confidence. And that's part of the benefit of being with me and being part of my group. If you decide to do the class and if you decided to join the live trading room, I call the trades live in the room. You follow along while you learn, take the trades and make money. It will help your confidence. There's nothing like green to help your confidence. Again, while you're learning. All right. But again, normal is one to one. While there are some trains that go far, far past that, one to one is normal. Uh, we did McDonald's. Let me just see if I can pull this up. Or actually, no, let me show, show you uh, Microsoft. 
We did Microsoft last week. This was way more than one to one, uh, one to one trade as far as the gains. We did this as both a day trade and an option. But that was not planned. Sometimes things we went long this. This was a long, okay, this was last week in here. Closed here, gapped up. This was a gap. Ran up here 10 points on the day. Ran up here again, straight up like a rocket on Friday as well. We did the day trade here. We did options. And you could have got out of the option here or here. It was a huge strike. This was not planned. Sometimes you'll get something that goes more than one. Sometimes you'll get something that goes way more than 100%. It's not planned. Everybody takes the trade. It just, poo it goes. And all of a sudden, you're up 200, 300% without thinking. That's the way those big trades happen. They do not happen by throwing your whole account in something stupid like a gamble. Do you know what I mean? Like the, like the GME. Let's look at that now since I brought it up, which has collapsed. And people bought it at 300 and it's nowhere near there, but let's just quickly look at it. Do you see what I mean? So again, if you're one of these people that really can't, can't wrap your head around some of these numbers because you haven't been doing well, or maybe you never traded in your life before and you just can't wrap your head around it, then break it down in daily goals and break it down in weekly goals and break it down in monthly goals so that you can wrap your head around it. Why this is taking forever here, there. So that you can wrap your head around it, okay? Anyways, people bought this all the way back up here, 300 something, 400 something. Could it go there? Maybe, but do you see how that's very, very low odds? And even if it does go there someday, you have no idea when, and you're down in a trade till it does. So that's not, that's not what we do. That's gambling. I uh, see the West says he's late, that's fine. Or her, I don't know who the Wiz is. Any questions, write it in the room. Anyways, if you wanna come and learn what I know and the strategy that I apply, it's called the Golden Gap Course and it teaches you how to find, pick and play the best bearish gap daily and the entries and exits. Now, I do teach a bullish class. I only teach that class once a year. I teach the bearish class once a month because we mostly short, okay? And again, we're in and out very fast. I will sometimes go long in the room though. And even though, you know, I prefer to short, if I see a gap like Microsoft, we will go long because we went long Microsoft and that was a huge straight. But I do prefer to short. The reason I prefer to short, and this is just in general, and this is true, is because selling happens faster than buying. There's no emergency. If you're thinking about going long, I'll just use Microsoft. You say, this stock is strong, I could go long today, maybe I should go long tomorrow. You're thinking, 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 there's no emergency. When you're in a stock, there is more of an emergency thing, which is the panic as it's selling off. You see the difference? So there's panic buying is something that rarely, rarely occurs in stocks or the market. It can occur, I've seen it happen, it's really, really rare. But you do have panic activity when you have stocks dropping and selling off. Okay, and so that's why those moves happen fast, okay? So for the people that have asked questions about, do they have time to do this? Now, I know some people are working from home. That's convenient if you can kind of do your own schedule with your job. If you can work from home, you can trade in your computer between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern time. If that fits your schedule, you have the time to do my strategy and use it. Now, if you don't have any time and you're back to the office and you really don't have the freedom to trade actively at your computer in the first half hour of the day, maybe you wanna think about doing options. The options newsletter, you don't have to do the class. There's no prerequisites for that. And the trades get emailed to you. You have to put the trades on when you get the newsletter, when they get come emailed to you, and then you can just put a sell order, a day order, a cancel day order that will sell the trade if it hits that day without watching it, okay? if that's what you want to do. My options trades and my day trades are both based on my gap strategy, okay? They're both based on my gap method. So it really depends what your schedule is, whether or not you have time to train, you know, five days a week or not. I have a bunch of different people in different, doing different things in the room. Some people are full-time, some people are part-time because they have other jobs and they're home the days that they're trading, the days that they're not, they're not home. Everybody is doing different things. And again, the world has changed in the last year and a half. So it's interesting because we're in, still in changing times. We're still in flux. Uh, a friend of mine that works for JetBlue, they're, they're having all these other people now 
they want all of them to work from home, the back office people. So more and more companies are pushing people now into work from home. I guess the companies don't want to have, you know, they don't want to pay for the commercial space. They don't want to pay for the rental space. I don't know. So more and more people are still going to continue to work from home, I think. I think this is a trend that will continue into uh, 2022. So if you're someone that wants to trade, or if you are trading now and losing, like I, I talked about a few slides ago, you've got to make some changes to what you're doing. You cannot continue to use the same method and strategy if you're losing. It just doesn't make any sense. You can trade for income, or you can trade just for some extra money, or you could do this full time. I suggest finding a way to do this at the same time as you're doing your regular job until you can supplement your income. Or if you were looking to get, you know, retire sooner, maybe you continue to doing this and then you want to just have extra money in retirement, there are some people in the room who are retired that trade with me. So they're doing this for extra income to supplement their retirement. So there's lots and lots of reasons that people trade, but the goal is always to make money. The goal is always to make money. That's always why you want to do it. And like I was saying earlier, a bigger th the biggest thing I find with people that have been attempting to trade for years is that they lack confidence and they just don't know what they're doing. And that's why having a system to follow every day makes it a lot easier for you. And also having a person to follow every day it makes it a lot easier for you. If I say I love Microsoft and you happen to rate it and you liked it too, that's the confirmation for you. You understand? But it's really just having the backbone of the structure. And that's something that a lot of people lack. They get up in the morning and they lack the structure. And they just say, well, I'm, I'm just not disciplined. I can't do this. It's impossible. It's too hard. I can't do it. That's not true. There are people that have never traded in their life that I've taught that are making money and they never traded in their life before. There are people from all different kinds of backgrounds. You don't have to have some master's degree. You don't even have to have a bachelor's degree. Uh, you don't have to have read any books before you came to me either. I teach the class from the basics to the ground up. It's, it's an intense class, like I said, because it's only in two days, but I pretty much teach everything. And I'm here for people when they have questions if they wanna call me after the class. If you wanna be successful, trading if you want to be successful and make money in the market you have to learn what to do the road that i took was not planned i took one class when i started out i thought i was going to be able to make money after that class like that i was wrong okay i didn't know what i was doing the class was a very very basic class on technical analysis which was a good foundation for me the class was expensive in fact it was more expensive than the class that i charge for now my class now is seven grand i paid uh, $8,500 for my class, and that was 13 years ago, actually. So, you know, I thought I was going to be able to just do it and, you know, immediately start doing it for career. It didn't work out that way. It was a good foundation, but I learned a lot of things, a little uh, about a lot. It was a broad-based thing, and it really didn't help me make money. And that kind of, like, took me down the road where then I said, I've got to find something that I can make money and that has to be more pinpointed and more targeted because what I learned was just a blanket of stuff and that didn't help me to make money. When you want to make money in a trade, it has to move and you got to get the direction right. If you get the direction right in something like Microsoft, you don't even have to think. You're making money. If you went long that stock at all since the earnings, you're up. I don't care where you took it, literally. When you get the direction wrong, you're screwed. It's impossible to make money. You're going to lose, okay? So the whole thing that I do about my analysis in the morning is, one, finding the right pick that's going to have a big move, okay, and then getting the direction right. And the pick counts because the fact is that I know, you know, people love to do these low float stocks, these cheap stocks, these penny stocks, whatever. I think they're dangerous. I do not trade those things. You have to take like 150,000 shares or 200,000 shares of some of those things to make any money at all. They don't have any volume, and they're not, they're not traded by institutions. So all the stocks I'm looking at traded out have tons of volume. They're familiar with your com their companies. You know about them. All of them, okay? And they have lots of volume, and institutions are trading them. What do I mean? Hedge funds, big hedge funds, little hedge funds, professional traders, okay? So they have tons of volume. Uh, Johnny, you have a question. I see you're writing, but it's stuck. I don't know if Kathy, if you can help Johnny and anybody else. So anyways, getting back to what I was saying, you've got to get the direction right, and the pick is important too, so that you get the movement, okay? And that's why taking it seriously is important, and that's why you have to learn. It's like, 
like I'm working with a real estate agent to find an apartment. They're telling me lots of things. They're the experts in real estate in New York City. They know this building and that building and what building had, you know, bed bugs and what building has lawsuits and what building has structural problems and this, that, and the other thing. I mean, I wouldn't know any of these things if I weren't, wasn't working with them. They haven't found me an apartment yet, but they're steering me clear of problem places, okay? So, you know, you go to an expert when you need help in an area that you're not an expert in. I'm not an expert in New York City real estate. I feel like I'm sort of becoming one <laughs> from all the research uh, that I'm doing and, and, and my own and then also working with them for a year. But, uh, you know, the reality is that you go and you hire an expert when you want to learn how to do something that you're not an expert in. Uh, Johnny is asking, is the checklist tick-off method, oh, that's funny, tick-off method, you are so funny, Johnny, or is there discretion inside involved? I will say that uh, there is discretion in two of the points. How's that for being specific? Two. Two of the 26, I would say, might be insight the rest or not you just follow it and again that's part of this slight nuance in learning do you know what I mean in doing it for a long time and again one of the benefits of being in the trading room with me is if I have two things and I want to do one and I'm narrowing it down between A and B you know my intuition or whatever you want to call it my insight my experience i developed this system i'm doing this for 13 years you know will take me to the one that is the better trade do you follow me so there's no substitute for experience and it's so interesting i mean some people have followed me for so long and I, you know i don't know what they're waiting for it's like all the time they could be trading with me and they're missing out on years and years and months and months of experience to be with me because there is something to be said for that absolutely so learning from someone may cost you money up front but it saves you money in the end you learn how to focus and trade smart without going into a lot of detail here because i notice it's five o'clock and we're i don't want to go too much off topic but like i knew a hundred percent that microsoft would go to 325 on the day that i called this train i and i did send an email out then for people rick i see you here Rick, you're here. Rick is on the options letter. Rick, did you hold this trade to 325? Or what did you do with this trade here, Rick? Rick got the trade. I knew 100%. 100% it would go to 325 on the 27th. It did. Now, how did I know that? That was a far, far, far away from where the stock opened. The stock opened at 316. It actually went up to 326.09. See it? Now, how did I know that experience? But I shared the information with the with with the traders. Rick, are you there? Hello. Rick isn't writing. Rob is writing, but it's stuck. Okay, let's go to Facebook. So we did a couple trades in Facebook. Let's look at the gap in Facebook. This is a daily chart. Here we go. Stock close here, gap down, dropped. So up in here, take it to the right. You see where this was the night before, around 340 and change and whatever. Gap down in the morning, fell. Where is it at? 325. See it? This was a short here. On this particular day, it was the 22nd. So this is a gap down. Then it rallied the next day. This must have been Friday. This was Monday the 25th. Then it gapped down. Now, again, this was news. This was last week. I don't remember what it... Oh, they were changing their name or something, I think. Whatever. It was some kind of news. Stock fell off an absolute planet. It gapped down here, fell. We shorted it. Got the drop. Here's the volume. Okay. So let's look at this one here. Now, this is a fast trade. This is a quick trade. This was an options trade last week. It was a put. Now, what's a put? A put is a short. The strike was 
But I did it for an expiration date of Friday because I just wanted to get the move quick. But this was one where it's really quick. The cost of the trade for one contract was $3.65. 25 contracts cost $91.25. This is an advanced trader risk. You can risk half this. You could take in one. It was $365. You could have taken four. Whatever you decide you want to risk per trade. Profit was $15,875, which is 174% return investment. This is a nice, nice trade. Now let me go back here to this Facebook. Actually, no, let me pull it up here. This was just, actually it was a week ago. Today's Tuesday. That was Tuesday, yeah. So this completely sold off. It's 100% retraced the sell off here since then. Now I'm not long this stock, just to clarify here. I have not called any trades in this since the day that it sold off. But do you see that this was a good day to play it? This was a good direction to play it. You had the big move, boom, you're in, you take it, you're out, boom. In here, this is gobbledygook. Do you know what I'm saying? None of these bars are big. Yes, it gapped up, but it's not really going anywhere. Here you take it, boom, out, done, boom. Okay, you see the concept here of chunking it out and playing momentum and getting the big move? This is a big move. So this happened in one day or less than that. It was a couple of, like it was in the afternoon. I can pull up the 15 minute. This is one, two, three. Do you see what I mean? This is take it, get in, boom, out, done. Um, Johnny, I don't know what you mean. I'm not affiliated with any, any group. I own the stocks, which, which is an educational company. I'm not affiliated with, with anybody else. Uh, Rob, I think you're on the marketing list. I've been sending it out. I can find the most recent, uh, to send you. But I think you're on the marketing list where I send the results, but I can go back and find the most recent email. But I thought you were on the marketing list. But does everybody get the concept there on the Facebook? Okay. Then let's talk about the cues. Okay. So again, taking a look here at a couple gaps. This is a day chart. This is the this is the ETF for the market. Closed here, gap down, fell, boom. Could have shorted this. Nice drop. Even though it closed with a tail, this was a big drop. You take it, boom. Get the drop, get out, boom. Here's another one. Closed here, gap down, take it. Get the drop, boom, out, boom. You could have done this one here. Take it, get the drop, boom, out, boom. You see how you're trying to get momentum, 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 in, out, in, out. And again, I'm show, I just showed you an options trade, but you can do this with day trade, you can do this with options. Now, I'm gonna go over here, the Q's option, we did this was Monday the 4th. Let me find, find the Monday, October 4th. Oh, this was the one here. We did it. So the market closed here and gap down. We did the 357s. We did the puts, which is a short as an option, got the drop. Take it, get out, boom. Mm. So this was three, $3.80 for one. This is an advanced risk. 20 contracts is 7,600, sold at 7,60, profit 7,600. Again, you could just put the order out. You could say, wait a minute, I've got a lunch meeting today. I'm on TV. I can't watch it at 100%. I want out of this thing. Put a sell order at whatever you paid for, double it up, and you're done. It hit. We did the 357s. Now, this is a beginner risk. 380, three contracts, risk 1140, sold at 760, profit again, 1140. Some people do this because they can't watch. Some people cannot watch and they put in in order to sell it at 50%. At 50%, 50% is good. If you risk a thousand bucks and you could sell it and make 500, that's a good trade. That's a good trade. So again, you set your risk according to the size of your account. If you don't know what to set it at, you can ask me and I will tell you what I think. Johnny, your thing is stuck again. Your typing is stuck again. Kathy, maybe you can help him. 
Anyway, success or failure has everything to do with the quality of your system. If the quality of your system is good, you will win in more trades than you lose. There are trades that I lose in. I don't like to lose. The thing about being with me that's beneficial is I don't like to lose. Someone asked me in the last webinar, why don't I go over losers? I like to have amnesia about losers. I don't want to focus on losers. I want to focus on winners. I luckily do not have that many losers, but I certainly don't obsess or focus on them. I think one of the biggest mistakes that traders make, and this is my experience as a business owner now and talking to people that have traded in the past and are still trying to be successful, they're not clients of mine. They're people that are thinking about coming to me and they, they've been you know, losing money in the market, is that people obsess and dwell on losses in the past. Those losses could be from bad trades, they could be from taking classes, they didn't learn how to trade. Like I told you, I took a class when I started and I didn't learn how to make money doing it. But I haven't obsessed about that and if I had, I would have never figured out my own system. So, you know, you really do have to have amnesia about things that have happened in the past. Think of it like relationships. You should have a, a good positive relationship with stocks and you should have a good positive relationship with money. Because if you do, then you're going to be able to move forward with success and a success mindset. If you obsess and dwell over past relationships like romances you've had, or if say you got, were married and got a divorce or it was a bad breakup or something like that, how are you ever going to move forward and fall in love again? How are you ever going to get married again? Or whatever the case may be. Again, you want to be happy someday, don't you? Do you want to dwell in the past of failed relationships? No. So training is very similar to that. And you need to think of it like that. And, and far too often are traders obsessed with the past. You should look at it like really a relationship because really, it, this is an individual activity that you're doing with the market and the relationship is between you and the market and really money. So it really comes down to the nuts and bolts of it of your relationship with money. Um, Johnny, are you asking about prop accounts? Is that what you're asking about? There are tons and tons of proprietary day trading firms out there. You can go wherever you want as long as you can actively day trade and have charts, okay? You can go wherever you want. I'm not affiliated with anybody. Uh, there's one person that I will refer people to because I traded there in the past a long time ago, but you, I'm not affiliated with them and by no means do you have to go there. You can go wherever you want. I mean, people are trading with now this Robin Hood, which, you know, I mean, you can open up an account with $500 there. I'm not saying to go there, and I'm not affiliated with Robin Hood at all, but there are so many places now that you can go and actively train. You have to do your due diligence and check on the places that you want to go to, but you do not need um, hundreds of thousands of dollars to train. If you want a referral, for a broker though, Johnny, I will be happy to send you one. Just email me. But you can really go wherever you want. Uh, great info, thank you. Well, you, well, as far as doing the orders, the broker will teach you how to do that. The broker will can even set up your charts for you. They can jump on your computer and take it over like Kathy does and set everything up for you if you want. That's actually the easiest part. But if you never pressed a button before, after you get everything set up, after the broker helps you set everything up, so you don't fat finger something, I would practice with you know one share or something or 100 share lots. I would practice very small uh, the first time you ever trade it. That's the easy part. Pressing the button to buy something and sell it or short something and buy to cover is the easy part. You learn how to do it a couple times, it's you're done. It's the whole thing of ch making the choices and the picks. You can practice even on a demo without live money if you want. You could even do that now, you know. So how do you become successful day trading? The number one key ingredient to becoming successful as a trader is having a specific system and strategy that can offer you reliable and consistent profits on a regular basis. That's what I focus on doing. Again, I focus on winning. Trading success and financial success in the market is not by accident. While there are some people that are all into these get rich quick Reddit stocks, I'm telling you, more people in those stocks lose. 
it, it's great you say we get lucky. I consider I get lucky when I get a Microsoft trade. I didn't plan on that. I didn't know that would happen until it did. Do you see what I'm saying? Those kinds of days are days that happen that you have fabulous days. But it really, if I didn't have a system, if I didn't have a rating system, if I didn't know the things I know, I would have never found Microsoft, known it was going to go at least to 325, know it was going to have a big move, go long it, know it was going to work as a long. People shorted that stock that day. And if you shorted that, you lost. So again, it's by pure design. I set out to use the information and apply it. Boom, boom, boom. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be fine. Anyways, you've got to have a niche, okay? Uh, getting back to what I was saying with the real estate agents, you know, that's their thing. That's their niche. They are, they do, they are not experts in every market. They are experts in the Hamptons. They've told me all about what's happening in the Hamptons, in case I want to buy a house there. They are experts in Manhattan. Everything's happening in Manhattan here. They are not experts in... Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, of the real estate market there. They don't, they don't know what's happening in the market there. They don't know what's happening in the market in San Diego, California. Do you understand? So it's not just, you're, you're, it's, it's just fine tuning it again. So it, you, again, a general overall Broadway thing was saying, well, uh, the markets are good right now. Real estate's gone up. That's not, you know, you need someone that's a niche, like what's the right neighborhood? What's the right building? These things, they make a difference. And that's what I do. It's not just blanket trading across the board. It's fine tuning it. We've got to get in here in the one minute and we got to pick this stock and here's why. And we're going to short it. And here's when we're going to short it. And here's when we're going to get out of it. This time at this number, it's a niche. You understand? That is what you need to be successful. And I really think you need that to be successful in anything. The real estate agent is a good example, but I could say that about a million different careers. You know, there are some, uh, there are some actors and actresses that are extremely good, very successful. Why? They they have a niche with whatever they're doing. Then there are some that are just eh, kind of successful, a little, a little bit, not really. Or then some that are just failures and not successful at all. Okay, and it's just, it's just. I could go on and on about so many different things. If you were an attorney, you have to have a focus. You go to law school, but you know, you want to do really well, you have to have a focus. What are you going to do? Litigation? Or are you going to do uh, corporate? You know, I mean, it's just, you have to have a focus on what you're doing. That's how you're going to make a lot of money. People are going to go to you and say, Mr. So-and-so is the expert. You follow me? So you've got to grab hold of what works. And so my system is based on, I was saying earlier, institutional money. Institutional money moves stocks. I figured out using the 26 point checklist, institutions bought Microsoft. Again, why? I don't know and I don't care. It must have had great earnings. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I don't know. I don't have time to read the earnings. I get up at 5 a.m., I'm rating my gaps, I go work out, come back, trade, boom. I don't care what the earnings said. Maybe the earnings were bad, maybe they were good. But Microsoft was bought by tons of institutions or would not have gone, it's going to flip to this chart again quickly, and had the move it did as quick and fast as it did without being bought. Hedge funds bought this stock. Again, 401k money is in these stocks in the market. The stock the night before earnings closed at 310.11. Let's just take it from today's close. Today's close was 329. This is one, two, three, four. So within four days here, look at that move. I know the stock isn't cheap. I know it's over $300 a share, but that's still a huge move for the stock to move 20 to some points like that in just four days, okay? It was bought. And if you look at the volume again, it's tremendous. Look at that. It's the V square, third row down. See the V? And let's look at the Friday volume too. Crazy. So again, it's very easy to make money when you're on the right side of things. And 
traders, for the most part, really cannot make moves like that. It's institutional money. So my niche is looking for the institutional money gaps. There are lots and lots of gaps. Most stocks gap every single day. How do you know which gap is going to move up or down? Because I'm looking for the institutional money. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap in the first place. And not every gap down can you short, and not every gap up can you go long. Why? Not every gap is created with institutional money. I'm trying to pinpoint the ones that are. The professional gaps that happen to play out in stocks are formed by one thing, and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. So the 26-point rating system pinpoints the direction of the footprints of institutional money and gaps. They're telling me, Microsoft's going to get bought. It's going to go. It's going to go big. Woo! And it goes. And we got to get in. And we try to get in as soon as we can, meaning the first 5, 10, 15 minutes of the day. Okay? So when I'm looking for the footprints, I'm looking for what? Money. Sometimes it's money that sells a stock, so we short it. Sometimes it's money that buys a stock, therefore we go long it. Okay? But again, I told you I prefer to short. So by having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, I get confirmation. Confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on my side and I play it. Gaps are an event. They're an event in a chart, in a daily chart. You gotta have a daily chart. You set it up. Johnny was asking about broker. You set it up a daily. And it this creates a sense of urgency. What do we do? What do we do? An action then is being forced by participants of the stock. And this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps and specifically golden gaps, which is just a term that I coined my system because it's like finding gold in the market. Microsoft is a good example. It's a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money. Now, while you might have found Microsoft yesterday or Friday or whatever, the entry that we had in it on Thursday was early and quick and fast and good. So when you get in something, the earliest you can get in it, which is close to the low of the day in a long and close to the high of the day in a short, you have choices of where you want to get in and out. You can hold it if you want to. You can get out of the quick if you want to. You can get out of half of it and hold the rest or whatever you want to do. Vlad, I don't know why you don't come back to the room. I said that to you in the email the other day. Glad said he's happy. I'm doing well. I do not know why you don't just come back. Vlad, for years you could be trading. Vlad is an old timer. Now let's look at INTC. This is a daily chart. Stock close here, gap down, boom, right up here. It was around 56 and change, fell down here in the morning. This is the, what was that? That was the 22nd, it was around 50 something. We shorted it. Look what it did after this. Now I didn't play this after this, but look, it went boom, boom, boom. Again, this is institutional selling, came in. We shorted it here in the day, but you could have done it for the week. And again, I did not, but you could have. All right, we shorted this at $50, 4,000 shares, risk is 2,600, exit was 49.25, boom, profit 2,800. This is a day trade. This was a fast trade here on this day, see the volume. Now again, I'm gonna go back to this newer chart here because I clipped this from the other day. Again, you could have done an option in this, I didn't. You could have done a swing trade, you could have shorted it a couple days in here as an equity trade. I just did it the one tray, but you see the nice follow through there. This had follow through, Microsoft had follow through. This was follow through the downside, Microsoft had follow through the upside. Sometimes my, my gaps or plays, I should say, do have follow through. I try to look for something new every single day, but many times you could go back and, and look at what we did yesterday and it will have follow through. That's something that you can think about for longer term investing or swing trading if in fact you want to do that. It goes back to the quality of the gap. It goes back to the high quality of the gap rating, which made the trade work in the first place when I rated it on that particular day. I, I like to do something new every day to get the bigger move in the first day we can get it. But very often you do have nice follow through in some of these things. And I don't always play all of these as options. So sometimes I'll do a trade as an option and a day trade. If I do that, it's really, really good. And those are the ones you wanna go in, like Microsoft was one of them. This I just did the day trade and was done, but this did follow through and continue. That was a short. It had selling. I called the trade in the room. In fact, I think this was the week of the open house. I think it was. Okay, let's talk about Facebook. We did this a bunch of times. I was talking about this option. 
again, that was last week. We did this on, and this is pricey now. Actually, this is a little expensive. We shorted this, again, as a day trade, an equity trade. What does that mean? It means not that you need the full cash value. You have to have something called margin or buying power. For example, if you have a retail account, you need a minimum of 25,000 and to, to trade on margin and you would get what? Four to one buying power. So you would have $100,000 in buying power with 25,000 in cash. You're not risking $100,000. That helps you take a position in a stock, for example, like Facebook, because the cost of the position is, and again, this is just an example here, would be $312.90 per share. You divide that by four for the cash, but anyways, that's how you do margin trading. Everybody that's an active trader trades on margin. And we're in and out quickly and we're flat. We're not holding these trades overnight. If I'm holding overnight, I'm doing an option. And I have a fixed risk, whatever the number of contracts I take. Okay? And any questions about that, let me know or margin because someone's asking about brokers. Anyway, shares was 2000 risk 2800 exit was 311.50. Boom. Again, a dollar out. Boom. Right away. Take it out. A dollar out. Get it? Boom. Mm. You're out. 100% out. Risk 2800, make 2800. So we talked about this as we talked about this put earlier. Here's the day trade. It was the same day, same gap, selling, different way to do the trade. This was on margin. The other one was an option where you pay a fixed cost or you do them both. Again, there are people with me that are doing them both because I'd like to do them both, uh, but you can only do one or you can do both. Okay. Oh, this is from Rick, and Rick is here. Ricky didn't answer me earlier. Rick wrote me a very nice <laughs> testimonial. I said, thank you, Rick, because I, ne I, I, I never get nice things from people. Even though people think nice things, nobody takes the time to write them. Ricky didn't answer me earlier. Are you there? Rick. Rick's been on the letter. I think a couple of months he's been trading options. Rick, you have not done the class yet, I don't think. Have you? I don't think you did. Or did you? Rick! Rick must have me on mute, but he's here. <laughs> Anyways, any questions from anyone? Anyways, the system makes sense. I make good choices because I rate the gap every day when I get up. He's counting his money, how funny. <laughs> Maybe he is, because he's not answering, and I can see his, I see his uh, name in here. Anyways, the system tells you how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? You trade a strategy and system that's profitable. Okay, golden gaps are profitable, and they focus on momentum. What stocks should you trade? Stocks a gap and rate twenty points or more. You don't need the perfect score. I rate the high, I rate them, and I do the highest one. When do you trade them? Early in the morning on the open when they set up a trigger as soon as we can. And if I send out an options trade in the pre-market, which very often I do, like at 8 a.m., then you do it after the open. You do it after, okay? You cannot do options in the morning early, but sometimes I know super duper early that I like something and I want to do it. Now, to hit these kind of numbers, what do you need to risk? Some of these trade risks are advanced. I've been doing this for a long time. You absolutely should start out, even if you have the cash to trade with a high level of risk, start out with a couple hundred bucks. You can work it up, have one good week, step it up. Take your time. You have all the time in the world to do this. But if you're looking to make an average of $1,000 a day, like I said, you need to risk about $1,000 a trade. This does not have, have anything to do with your buying power margin. This has to do with the risk per trade, which is what? It's the difference between the entry and the stop. If I say 10 by 50, that's what? 40 cents risk. You count your share quantity based on the 40 cents, okay? So I am not taking 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. I'm not taking the share, same share size every time because my stop isn't the same every time. Again, I teach this in the class, but my dollars and cents a risk amount is close to equal each time. Follow me? Because again, your risk cannot be crazy different in each trait. I think the most important for people, thing for people is to be grounded be grounded in your choices, 
this is, it doesn't mean you're not excited about making money. It doesn't mean you can't make a lot of money. People run into these Reddit chat rooms because they think they're going to get rich. You can do something else, accumulate wealth over time by learning how to make good choices in the market. And again, this is active trading. You could call it investing and you want, but it's really just active trading. And I say chunking it out. You make good choices that you use it over the light of your lifetime. And that's how you build wealth. I had a guy that took a very small account. Um, he had $5,000 in it. And this was over the summer. He was just doing options. And within six weeks, he had over 20 grand in it. It's very possible. You've got to make good choices. And it does not have to take forever. I think the consistency is what's very important. And it's something that people just get sidelined about. You know, you're gonna have questions. You do the class, call me on the phone, ask me a question, email me, ask me in the room. That's okay. And don't be piggish about targets. Don't be piggish about targets either. Uh, particularly you have to remember when you're up in a trade, you, you, it's never over to the fat lady sings, which is what, until you're out. That's part of the problem with this market. I was talking about that on Cheddar. The girl was asking me, where's the market going? Listen, it's going up right now. It could come up for the next two months. It could go up every day for the next two months till 2022. I don't know if it does or not. It could, but you know, it's not going to keep going straight up forever. That's the thing. That's the thing. So eventually you have to take profits. All right. You cannot have piggy targets for everything you do. Anyways, getting back to the beginning of the morning, we were talking about it. A system consistently helps you stay on track. You will not get worked up about the fact that some trades lose, even though I don't like that either, because you had a fixed risk and you allotted that this many will lose. And you know that tomorrow you will get up and you will take one that wins. And therefore, that's how you keep going. Okay, it's like taking, you're going up the ladder. You take five steps up, you might take one step back. Two steps up, one step back. Three steps up, and you keep moving forward. It's like if you ever went in a diet. Say so you go on a diet, and you then you're on the diet. You're doing great for two weeks. You get invited to a Halloween party, and you're like, oh, crap. I I want to go to this party, and you're like, I'm, I'm going to stay on the diet. I'm going to stay on the diet. You go to the Halloween party. Everyone's having a good time. You want to have a glass of wine. It's not the end of the world. Enjoy yourself for the one night at the party. You get back on the diet tomorrow. You get back on the diet tomorrow. I mean, you have to live life. This is part of the process. Again, you have to keep going. You can have little step backs. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean you lose your whole account on one day and go hog wild and go crazy. So many people, it's like the end of the world when they make silly mistakes. You've been there for sure. Yeah. Anyways, what helps with successful profits in the system? Money management, having a good mentor, I use stops. Again, I teach this in the class, but I absolutely do use stops. I do not use stops and options because I just get out when I'm up and the amount that I risk is the stop. I can't lose more than I risk. So for me, that is the stop. But you know, you just you can't lose a lot. You have to have a cutoff point. That's why I use, I call it a hard stop, but it's a limit order stop when I day trade. Because things can go against you pretty fast. Like we talked about the fact that I take trades quick. Well, if I get hit out of something, boom, I could get hit out of it like that. I'll retake it. I'll, I'll call it a retake. I take it again then, because what if it doesn't set up again? I can't let something go $5 against me, okay? Again, this is all part of the process and all part of the system. If you wanna be an active trader, you can't lose a lot. You're gonna have some losses, but you can't lose a lot. So you have to condense them. You have to have more winners and losers, and the ones that lose, you can't lose a lot, okay? So that's part of having the stop and again, focusing on quality, which really helps too. It's the reinforcement of the discipline and behavior. And you learn in the class where to put the stop. I call it in the room live. But it's really not about quality. I mean, it's really not about quantity. It's about quality. It's going back to what I was saying earlier. It's like you hire an expert for something because you want to know what to do. I could have talked to 10 different real estate agents to try to fish it around for information about the market. But th that would have been a waste of my time. And a lot of them probably wouldn't have known what they were talking about. It's not about talking to a million different real estate agents. I just want to, I need to find one good one that will find me something that meets all my criteria and give me good advice. And so that's what I'm looking for. So I need one good trade per day. 
that's it. I don't need to trade all day. I do not have the room open all day till four o'clock. We close the room by 10 o'clock, 10, 15, maybe 10, 30 if I'm lecturing. I'm looking for quality trades, not quantity trades. The best days I have, it's only one ticker symbol, one stop. And I'd love to do a Microsoft every single day where I do the same trade and the same option and the day trade every day. That doesn't happen all the time, but that's all I need. Then you plop on the size and you're good to go. And that's how people say, well, how do you make more money? You add size. You do it as a day trade, you do it as an option, you take more risk, that's it. And if you are making quality trades and your win ratio is high, you can take more risk. Do you understand? So that's, that's the difference. It's the quality, not the quantity. Some trading rooms are open all day long. It's difficult to follow the people that are even calling the trades in the room. It's crazy. I don't even know if the people that are calling the trades in the room are doing all the trades they're calling so many. And you can't follow them. I was in a room like that when I started. It was annoying. I, I couldn't do all the trades. I couldn't even follow them all. It was nuts. Uh, you know, and I, and I realized then even that I didn't like that. I just didn't like that. Plus the day goes on and you get tired as the day goes on and your eyes get tired too. You'll make better decisions if you condense it. I always say I can be perfect for 30 minutes a day. I don't know if I can be perfect for six and a half hours a day from 9.30 to 4, but I know I can be perfect from 9.30 to 10 or 9.30 to 10.30 if I need to, meaning a laser focused, you know, turn off the TV, turn off your phone, don't look at your email, focus on the, you know, the chart and do what you need to do and react quickly because sometimes you do have to react quickly to things. I think one of the reasons that, again, traders lose is they feel like they're taking pot shots. It's like a 50-50. And again, I do options in a directional way. I buy the put and I buy the call. Boom. You know, uh, people are doing all these things to protect themselves. And then when they pr make profits, they don't make, as, they don't make as much. When they lose, they don't lose as much. I don't do spreads. I either believe that it's going higher or believe it's going lower. You know? Any questions? Uh, Vlad, I have no idea what are you saying. Muchos gracias, but did you ask me a question? Kathy, if you read something, I missed it. Um, okay, we were talking about return on investment. Again, that's for options. Return on risk is in trading because you need margin and buying power. Again, if you need a referral for a broker, ask me, or you can pretty much go wherever you want. But getting back to what I was saying, if you know what somebody's going to do before it doesn't, you can make a lot of money. Did I know Microsoft earnings would be up? No. No, I did not. But when I saw the gap, I rated it, then I made the decision. So I'm not predicting the gap itself. Do you understand? I'm seeing the gap, and then I rate it, and then we do it. Now, sometimes I get a feeling. I don't trade on feelings, but sometimes I do. I was just on Cheddar Live, and they had two earnings, Clorox and Cars that we talked about. They're both up. We were having a conversation about Clorox before the earnings came out, and then it did what I said. That is not a trade that I'm in, and I don't know if I'm going to do that trade tomorrow, but it was a feeling when I looked at the chart. They said, we're going to talk about Clorox, so I gave, I gave my insight. I said, if it does this, then this, and then it did it. I don't trade based on feeling or insight. I trade based on using my system. But I will say this, when my intuition matches up with my system, then it's a green light for me. And that's, again, experience in doing this for as long as I have been. I think the difference between me and going to other people to learn stuff is other people do a plethora of things and they're really not an expert on one specific strategy. Because I focus just so narrowly on one way to trade using this gap rating system, it has heightened my intuition. You can call it a sixth sense, you can call it whatever you want, but it makes it very beneficial to be with me. Because I will give sometimes insane targets and things and they will go there. Or call trades that you don't think are going to work and then they end up working. You know, that extra layer does help, but it's because I'm doing it a long time. It's like somebody that plays tennis or sport. There are a lot of good tennis players out there. There are a lot of professional tennis players out there. The people that are at the height, at the top, 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 that have won all the awards and all the trophies and have been playing for so long, why is that? You know, there are reasons that there are people that are at the top of the cream of the crop and that are extremely successful. Um, I don't see any timestamp 
Vlad, it's 1716. I'm sorry. If you ask me a question, can you just rewrite it? Kathy does it. She doesn't see it either. I don't know. If you have a question about something that you asked 15 minutes ago, I don't see it, dear. Can you, can you write it again? Kathy doesn't see it either. Uh, what else are we talking about? Getting the direction right. Focused. Getting the large directional moves. Rating the gap in the morning. Using the checklist, it tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. Go with the flow of the money. That makes it a lot easier for you as well. Again, we talked about opening up a trading account. You can wait to do that after the class. You can practice on a demo, practice with small size. And that's whether you're doing options or day trades. You gotta practice how to put in a stop, okay? But it's really important to focus on one thing. When you focus on one thing, you will have a higher chance of success. And also, again, doing less trades, you know, it's the idea of doing size to make more, not doing trade, 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 trade. So this idea is very doable to make this kind of money. And if you can't wrap your head around it because you haven't done it in the past, or you can't imagine that sitting in front of a computer for an hour a day, half an hour a day, you can make this kind of money. If you just can't, you'll see very quickly with me that you can, but you know, it's keeping it up with the consistency and the focus that counts. Some days I get up if I'm tired. If I'm tired, if I'm distracted, you know, I recognize that, you know, I, I, you know, I'm running a business, I'm running the room, I have to be there. But sometimes I have to do meditation, visualization before I trade then to get focused. You know, everybody is off days. If you've got kids or pets or spouses and you're having a bad morning, maybe you don't trade that day. Maybe take the day off. You can be, you know, laser focused if, if it's there. And if it's not, if you're distracted or you're sick, like I said, then you don't trade. Like I don't trade when I'm sick. Uh, okay, Vlad's question here is what? You can, you can, you cannot take options trades in the pre-market or the post-market. You can only do them on the day. You can take, I think you can enter, um, ETF, market ETFs, 10 minutes before the open, 10 minutes before the close. I don't suggest that and I don't do it, but you can't trade stock options like that. So between 9.30 and 4 is all you can trade options stocks uh, trade in the pre-market and the post-market, the hours of the pre-market and post-market. I've got up as early as 4 a.m. when I've had to be on TV and seen, seen the pre-market. And I think the post-market, I want to say it closes at 7? Or is it 8? I don't know. It's been a long time since I've stayed up watching the close of the post-market. But I'm not trading that. We're trading on the live day. Follow me? And you can use whatever charting service you want to use as long as you have day charts. Okay, getting back to the webinar. Thank you for letting me go over a little bit here, Kathy. You want to be deliberate in your choices. It's called conviction. I talk about this a lot in the class. I think when you understand something and you have the knowledge, it will help you risk money and it will help you get conviction. People never get to that point because they're all over the place. So you see how important it is to get to that point. You have to believe in something and to believe in it, you have to understand it and you have to use that system over and over and over again, okay? But in order to achieve your financial goal of making $20,000 a month, you've got to stay focused and you've got to have a plan of action to do it. So I teach my class, it's called the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap Course teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course teaches what direction to play the stock. It also teaches you how to play the stock on the live day and take the entries and exits. The class teaches you how to read institutional positioning and stocks. The Golden Gap course teaches you how to day trade gaps. You can do it for options. You can do it for equity trades. We were talking about share size. It's not the same. My monetary risk, I try to keep similar, but this isn't an exact science. Sometimes I'll take a trade, it's 2,500. Sometimes it's 2,800. I gotta get in. I don't wanna miss a trade because I'm messing around. But how much you make is a function of how much you risk, okay? You've got to be consistent. It's share size based on the stock. It's the more you risk, the more successful you can be as far as the monetary things go, but you can't risk your whole account. If you open up a prop account with $5,000, you cannot risk $5,000 in an Amazon option, for example. You cannot do that. You have to use a portion of your account. 
this seems like basic, but it, it I have to repeat myself because people need to know that. So put a plan of action in place. Trade only Golden Gap's a rate according to the 26-point rating system, so you have a high rate of success in directional bias. Two, get the best entry you can with precision early in the morning to get good risk to reward trades. Again, you know, you can get one and be done and out. You can let some of them run a little bit, see if they keep going. It is earning season. We get the big movers. That's what happened with the IBM. That's what happened with the Microsoft. There will be others this week and next week. It's a good time to trade right now. And you need to create a money management plan for yourself to achieve your goal. There are four quarterly earning seasons in the market. One, two, three, four. We're in the last quarter of the year. We still get gaps when it's not earning season. We just don't get as many. So I may do more day trades and more options in an earning season week, and we get big, bigger moves than in non-earning season. Okay, so the earning season is the rest of this month. Any questions? The whole philosophy, though, of the checklist is to find a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, a big move on the day, ideally, early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10, and precise entries with follow-through and a good risk-to-word target potential. That is what I want. I'm trying to get that in everything I do. That is always my goal. One strategy is all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need the general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people have that and fail all the time. So you've got to learn how to read institutional money in price patterns and gaps. And if you can do that, you don't need to do anything else. You really don't. It's just a function then of size and adding on the size of the trades. And if your reason for doing this is to make money, you will if you follow what I'm doing. I really am very good at what I do. Uh, I call a trade. And Rick, you're not answering me. So I don't know if you're there or not. In MCD, I did not do a video on that yet. I will do a video on that tonight if I'm not too tired when we're done. That was a sick sick trade. I, I, that was ridiculous. We did put this up here. We did an option. Forget what day this was even. Why what day we did it? We did what is today? Monday? Today, Tuesday. No, today's Monday. We did, it was last Wednesday. Rick, I don't know where you are because you look like you're there, but you're not talking. <laughs> we did on Wednesday, we did the 245 calls. Look, look at this. This is insanity. It was an option, doesn't expire till Friday. I can't imagine anybody wouldn't have been out of this today. Is it higher? Probably. I mean, this is, I mean, it's just like, sometimes I'm on a roll. I feel like I'm on a roll lately, but that was a sick call. Similar to Microsoft, but, you know, made new highs, 251.69. Any other questions here? Rick, I don't know where you are. You must have me on mute. <laughs> Anyways, the class is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. The class for November is this weekend, people. November 6th and 7th. It's always on a weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Class is online. Again, I'm in an Eastern time zone. Class is online. The tuition is $6,999. You must email me for the forms if you want to sign up. You cannot sign up through the website. You must email me. You have to fill out a questionnaire. I'll send you the outline what's included in the class. If you're interested, email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. And if you would like a trial to the room, email me too. Vlad, I really think you need to come back to the room. I think you're missing out. You can still work on your other projects on the side, Vlad, and come back to the room. You can do that, you know. Johnny, I don't know if you had any other specific questions from me about what you were saying. Let me look here. Brokers or something like that. I don't know what your other question was. Rob M., do you have any questions? We went a little over. I appreciate that. Um, 
It was a good lecture. If anyone would like a trial to the room this week, email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. Um, if you have questions, email me. If you want a trial this week, email me. I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. Um, I'll look at it tomorrow. I mean, I can look at stuff at night, but I usually wait to the morning. I'm fresh, you know, rested in the morning, so I usually have a new uh, view on things. But, but there was a bunch of stuff that was up tonight that if I don't see any good shorts, we might do a long tomorrow. You never know. Johnny's typing. Do you have a question? Room opens at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, but I don't get on the mic till after 9. Could be 9, could be 9.15-ish. But I write stuff in the room. Like if I like Microsoft, I'll write Microsoft in the room at 8.30. So you'll see what I like if you're there. But I don't start talking until after 9. And then the room closes whenever we're done trading. Well, I mean, we'll, I'll close the room at 9.45 if we're done. I do not trade all day. Johnny's typing another question. Go ahead. Or what? You're in sit. You're in Australia. Okay. Well, if it's eleven o'clock in Australia, I've had people that have traded with me before in Australia. I don't think I have anyone in the room right now, but in the past I have. I think the most difficult time zone for people that have been with me have, has been Hawaii. It's like 2.45, people have to get up in the morning or something crazy. Hawaii's rough. You could trade at 11 o'clock at night. You could, you could stay awake for that. Hawaii is rough. You know, I've had some people in Hawaii, it's tough to get up that early. In fact, I had, I had a couple people and then they would go back to bed. It's rough though. 11 o'clock at night in Sydney, that's okay. And you just, you'd be in bed by midnight. Excellent, very good. Any other questions, email me. I do have people in other countries that are in the room, yes. It's, you can trade the U.S. market from anywhere in the world. The hours, though, are 9.30 to 4. Like I said, you know, New York time, which is good for me. I'm a morning person. I like getting up early. It works for my schedule, but... You know, you could have to make it work for you where you live in the world. Again, if you're in Europe, it's, you know, afternoon. So I have taught people in every country, including China, and from far ranging places. And then people have to make it work for themselves. So it's it's really whatever you figure out that works best for you. You gotta understand English, even if you're in a foreign country though, because I only speak English. I call the trades in English. And you have to be able to short and go long US stocks. But there are so many places, like I said, that you can do it. So many. And one of the reasons that people like to trade that are in foreign countries that like to trade the U.S. market is because of the volatility, because of the volume, because of the momentum. Not every single stock market in every single country has this same kind of opportunity. So lots of people want to trade the U.S. market. Again, that accounts for a lot of the volume of the market as well. Yeah, you can sleep in the afternoon and be up at night. I don't, I don't start looking at stocks until I come back from the gym, but I will look at the market as soon as I get up, like at five. I don't start sitting down to rate gaps till after I get back from the gym and have breakfast between 7.30 and eight. That's my schedule. That is my schedule. Vlad, you should come back to the room. All right, have a great night, everyone. I'm going to get going so I can get up bright and early tomorrow morning. And if you have any questions, email me. If you want a trial, email me. I will see everybody tomorrow. Very good.